Hey guys, it's Daniel with another video. So today I wanted to talk a little bit different. Now in the past few days we've talked about Biden and his VP and a couple videos on those. We've had a few videos on some other stuff. I wanted to talk a little bit about people who are actually fighting to make a better future. And this is actually uh, uh, people that were with that are with the Poor People's Campaign. We did an interview with them, God, I think about a year ago. It's a good group. They're trying to get regular people win hearts and minds to prepare for, well, whatever the movement happens, when it happens, it's about winning hearts and minds, which is a lot of what you know, we're trying to do as well. So let's see. You know, we just passed four bills in Congress that gives trillions of dollars to corporations and a few billion to research and testing and small businesses and hospitals. Nothing for the, real, for the majority of the millions of 140 million poor and low wealth people. Nothing even to states and cities like Goldsboro and locality to help them fight this disaster. There ought to be some crying. There ought to be some congresspersons crying. My dear friend, AOC, uh, out of New York, she said, I can't vote for this bill. And I understand what she was saying. Some people saying, well, there's something in there. We'll get to it next. She said, but you said that after the first bill. You said that after the second bill. You said that after the third bill. Here we are, the fourth bill. And the people who are hurting the most, the people where the pandemic is living, the people who, if it lives among them, is going to threaten everybody else, the poor and the broken, keep getting ignored. Somebody ought be crying. Congress doesn't need to go home. You need to stay in session and pass a bill that at least ensures health care, living wage, and care for the homeless and utility and housing protection and care for the undocumented, the native tribes. Please now demonstrate that you are uncomfortable with other people's deaths, not comfortable. We don't need any more prayer and platitudes and patronizing and titles like essential workers. Pass a damn bill! He's exactly right. This is the point of the fight that we need to make sure we do not overlook. In the middle of all this, corporations get bowed out, you get ignored. Small businesses get a pittance of money compared to what has already happened with bailouts. I think at this point, what, the airlines wanted, what, $50, $50 billion, give or take? So the airlines, just the airlines, nothing else, are getting about one-sixth of the bailout, and that assumes they don't get another bailout later when they still run out of money. Uh, they get one-sixth of, of a bailout that all the middle-class businesses in the country get. This is how we distribute resources. This is because of lobbying, connections, uh, getting to be on boards of companies after you're a congressman, at getting to be board on Raytheon after you're a general. This is the system working as intended, but breaking apart the seams at the same time. Uh, America's system is collapsing. It is hollowing itself out. It is eating itself alive. We live in a country where, well, the bailouts that we're seeing in Europe, Asia, elsewhere, more equitable than the U.S. We see to the north Canadians getting 2000 Canadian dollars a month immediately, immediately helped out. Whereas here, we're supposed to live on... $1,200, if we're eligible for 10 weeks, that's not responsible. That's not what a country trying not to act like a company does. The reality is, representatives, many, are a lost cause. They fight for corporations. They get paid by corporations. They're employees of corporations, and they do what they are told. This is their get out of jail free card for corporations. There's a pandemic, we're losing money, we get bailed out first. When a corporation needs money, it's, oh yeah, no, we're gonna help them right away, that makes complete sense. The news goes, oh yeah, no, that's a good thing that they're helping them out, they need to get bailed out. But when it's regular people, like you and me, it's, hey, how are we gonna pay for it? We'll get to your bill eventually. This, people, People still get at me for like, how can you, I mean, Biden's so much better than Trump. It's like, here's the bar. If Biden's slightly better, Biden's right, Biden's right here, Trump's right here. I can't distinguish them from each other. Everyone says, oh my God, the Supreme Court. You mean like the Supreme Court Obama fought for that got us Gorsuch in the first place because he didn't put, um, not Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, didn't put in Gorsuch. 
they, they didn't fight. The Democrats don't fight. Republicans don't fight. They work for the same people, though. So when we have bipartisan bills, and I'll, I'll talk about AOC. He mentioned AOC in the video. I think, again, it's like I've been very split on AOC, and you've seen me do videos where I thought she's done good, and I've seen videos, I've done videos where I thought she's done pretty poorly. I know a lot of you guys in chat are split as well. I know a lot of people are like, she's a sellout, she's a lost cause, and other people are like, hey, she's doing the best she can. We are living in such interesting times. We're living in sort of obvious times as well. This is a system that was built up after the last world war. This is the American empire functioning as intended, just not for longevity, not for your sake, but for the sake of those with billions and millions of dollars at their disposal, who also couldn't last a couple weeks with lower than average sales. We need to make sure we gain support. Get people that aren't involved in politics. Don't try and convert them anything. Don't get them. Just start introducing them to the effects of politics. What happens when they aren't controlling what happens? Start talking to small businesses you know. Befriend them right now so that when we need to call on them in a political season for next cycle, those relationships have been established. What we need is to have... Bigger army. Diplomacy and for me talk about this a number of times if you watch the show. It simply means in history. This is mainly medieval times. The army with the most, more troops and how much they're geared as well, and that factors in. One, 90% of the time. Today, the politician with the most money wins 90% of the time. It's our job to flip the script, to flip the chessboard, to flip everything and make a new stable position that helps many for many people and we have to get there it's very important we do it's very important that we do what we can to convert people to the way of thinking that we have that both parties are toxic and must be replaced with a new system that isn't corrupt that can't be corrupt that punishes Maybe perhaps the harshest, harshest punishments in America should be for political corruption, not some of the least punished. I want to live in a country where if someone kills someone, they don't get as hard a sentence as a politician who corruptly puts a bill in that kills a dozen people or a hundred people or a thousand people. Power needs to be reined in. Keep an eye on what you're doing and let's all do what we can to better build a better future. It's very important that we fight to win. See you guys on the show.